Thanks for tuning in to the Long Island Local Podcast, recorded here at Audio Workstations in Bohemia, New York. We are interviewing local business owners, entrepreneurs, trying to provide you with the best information on all types of products and services available right here on Long Island. I'm your host, Matt, and let's jump right into the conversation. Welcome everyone to the Long Island Local Podcast. I'm your host, Matt, and we are sitting down today with David Gussin of many things. First of all, of the Everything Bagel. Second of all, Let's End All Racism Now, which is abbreviated and acronymized as LEARN. Also, 516 ads, 631 ads, and you said 718 ads as the actually, well? Yeah, the, the area codes in, in New York. Smart, yes. smart. Of all these things, and I, did I, I don't know if I got them in chronological they're, they're, order, but... All good. You did great. Let's go back, and let's, before we discuss the second two that we mentioned... Let's talk about this everything bagel business, because this being a Long Island local podcast, bagel business is paramount. So, you know, I had an everything bagel this morning. Yesterday, Dylan offered me one for for lunch, and I was like, no, I'm just, you know, too many carbs. I'm trying to stay away. And then someone offered me one this morning, and I couldn't resist. It was an egg everything bagel, a variation on your theme. I couldn't, a marketing phenomenon. A marketing phenomenon. So tell me about the thought process, the time. Take me back to the, great, the everything great, bagel. Great, great times, actually. Late 79, uh, early uh, 80s. I had worked in the store for years. Uh, one of my jobs was cleaning out the oven. Uh, those And this matters. You did not have this part this morning. No. Cleaning out the oven because those were the burnt seeds left over during the course of the day of all the baking. Okay. And then, so when we first made, the first everything bagels were made with burnt seeds. Whatever you swept out of the oven, swept them in a bin, here, make them with these. So you'd only get about two dozen bagels because how many burnt seeds were there, you know? I see. But now, today's everything bagel is made with fresh seeds. Was that because you had to prove the concept without wasting... I got to tell you, and, I, and I, I, I was thinking of this the other day, uh, getting ready for this interview, is back in those days, uh, coming home from clubs like Speaks and Malibu and hanging out on Long Island as a teenager, clubs that aren't around anymore at all. Right. Uh, so we used to come into the bagel store and open up the store. And even before the Everything Bagel was created, we would take these burnt leftover seeds and put them on our uh, lox and cream cheese sandwich with oh. the burnt leftover seeds. So, okay, uh, okay. To, to, for the connoisseur of everything bagels, burnt leftover seeds is the key. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that makes complete sense because after you've created a bunch of other random bagels, you have all these like burnt seeds. They have that smoky flavor. You don't want them to go to waste. And so why not experiment with them a little and see how far they can take your other bagel dishes? Easily to experiment. And uh, with the controversy with with, with Wikipedia, which uh, annoys me a little bit, uh, uh, the other bagels didn't need to be named. (laughs) (laughs) Sesame is sesame. Onion is onion. Poppy is poppy. No one had to say to poppy because freaking poppy seeds. Right. Someone had to name the everything bagel. So these people who disputed, they're like, I put all the seeds on the bagel first. You know, three white millionaires who've made millions. I'm here poor in Long Island. They've made millions of dollars, but they also say they created the everything bagel. So a, a smidgen annoying. Okay. <laughs> was one dimensional naming as in the past that's what you're saying it's like the names were obvious it had to be a poppy bagel because it had poppy seeds on it. I didn't name it the garbage bagel. It, I didn't name it the old seeds bagel. Right. It could have been <laughs> I the, didn't name it the lots of stuff. bagel. Right. It was a freaking everything bagel. I mean, right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Someone had to come up with it. And it's not only the style of bagel for indecisive people but people who appreciate multiple flavors. It's a good one. Give me everything. I, I love the everything bagel. Yeah. A uh, mixture of the seeds. It's excellent. All right. And the burnt is the takeaway for the, like to get back to the original flavor, you want to have a little bit of extra. I think you can achieve that by maybe over toasting a bagel. If they do give you one with a you can perfectly do a little... toasted bagel goes yes. a long way. The original had garlic and salt on it. Most these days, sometimes you see garlic and salt, but the original absolutely had garlic and salt on it at the time. Yeah. You got to, I, I would say to be a true everything bagel, you have to take every single topping that is at least in the store at the time 
and put it all on Yeah, we there. didn't have uh, sunflower seeds in our store. And I want you to know at the time, from a timing thing, they were pumping nickel bagels, they were cinnamon raisin, and then everything. came the big guy. <laughs> I'm, the also, everything bagel. I'm also a fan of the cinnamon raisin, but it's a different kind of an experience. It depends it's, what you're eating it with. You yeah. having it with cream cheese? You having it with butter and American cheese? You got, you know. <laughs> oh, and the cheese? Really? I haven't tried it with the cheese. No, I don't have it with butter and American cheese. Okay. Cinnamon raisin, I would have a cream cheese, sort of like okay. a dessert. Yes. I But I've also had it with butter, like just butter. And I got to say, I kind of like them equally. But every time I think of a cinnamon raisin bagel, there's just like this debate in my head about whether to go cream cheese or whether to go butter. Now, question, plain cream cheese or chive cream cheese? On a cinnamon raisin, for me, it's plain. I totally agree. Yes. <laughs> on, a, on an everything bagel, though, absolutely. I'll take the chive, I'll take the veggie cream it cheese. It does make a difference what bagel it is, it uh, does. depending on the detail. I feel like if you're in the zone of everything, you might as well have a cream cheese with a thing in it. You know what I mean? In the spirit of everything, you, you, you can't go wrong with the everything. There's now an everything roll. Our friends in Woodbury Sushi Vogue have uh, created the everything roll, and I hear uh, for them it's trending. People are coming in and asking for the everything roll, and just so you know, they, they have like a cream cheese with a lox with everything bagel seeds on it. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, you're you're like uh, associated uh, indirectly with everyone who's done everything on it's a bagel. It's become a marketing phenomenon. Crazy, you know, everything bagel seeds at Trader Joe's. If the shelves are stocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything <laughs> Every, but the bagel. Everything, yes. yes, everything bagel ice cream. So it's, it has become, it's become more than yeah. just the bagel. All right, well, that's so a, I get a kick out of it. I, I get a kick out of that as well because it's like such a big part of being on Long Island is, is bagel culture. And geographically, since yeah. I was in Queens, not politically, geographically. Yes. They, according to Wikipedia. Yes. Yes, we're part of you. So you could say that the Everything Bagel was created on Long Island. Yes. Specifically, Cross Bay Boulevard, Howard Beach, Queens, New York. I prefer to take the geographical definitions of, because, you know, if we're going to say Long Island, we should be talking about the whole freaking island. You know what I mean? When it's good, we'll say the whole island. When it's bad, we're separate. <laughs> True enough. Fair enough. I think we're guilty of that. All right, so I understand the everything bagel now. I feel I feel better about understanding the history and the inception of it. And I want to understand a bit about the history of Learn. Uh, let's end all racism now. Um, so tell me about uh, what year that happened and what the inspiration was for that. You well, know, that would be uh, that would be more like the late eighties, I think eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay. We, we, but I tell you, you can find it exactly because uh, it was when there was a skinheads on the Sally Jesse Raphael show. They so they could check when the uh, episode aired, right? And they had skinheads on the. It was right around the time where Araldo got hit in the nose by the KKK, and got a broken nose, wow. and all that time. And anyway, Sally Jesse Raphael had skinheads on. Uh, they were saying the meanest things uh, while being interviewed. Uh, audience members were crying. I was like, these people are freaking idiots. Learn. Uh, I imagine millions of people who think like I do screaming learn at these people Why? on TV. Like, what the freak's the matter with you? Learn. So I imagine millions of people. And I was like, there got to be something anyone could say that if you're really against racism, you should have no problem saying. And I thought for a while and it hit me. Learn. Let's end all racism now. I was like, wow, that's a freaking great message. <laughs> so then just playing around. I made it into red, white, and blue. You know, I was taught that this is America where people from all over the world come to try to make a better life for themselves. And while racism has certainly exists, if you think about it, America is really supposed to be the country about ending racism. Yeah. Uh, the word learn I like because uh, I'm now a preacher. I don't get on a soapbox. I'm an entrepreneur. I got a family to raise and all that. I'm not a preacher at all. Uh, but I thought it was a great message for children. So we made it red, white, and blue. And then we were, made the word racism go into a broken heart, like a logo. Right. So now it said, let's end all racism now with the racism going into a broken heart. So what do we have now? Now the message says, learn, acquire knowledge of ending racism. Let's end all racism now. Learn, acquire knowledge of ending broken hearts. You know, why, uh, why a broken heart? Because... You ask a million people what racism is, you get a million different opinions. But to me, this is now going back 30, 40 years ago, but to this very day, at a minimum, causes the feeling of a broken heart hovering over society. Now, I wouldn't waste my time trying to waste, uh, convince someone else that I'm right or look, listen to me, but I knew it was a beautiful message for children. You know, arguably learn, the most powerful word in the English language, learn, acquire knowledge. Literally, maybe the most powerful word in the English language. You know, the experts say, education, education, education. Good, learn, acquire knowledge. 
of ending racism, ending broken hearts. So uh, I don't, I'm no expert on racism, uh, but I certainly do my best to try to want to spread an opposite to it. And that was uh, by uh, educating the future. Uh, let people be and have faith in them. Yeah. I'm going to let people be and have faith in them. I appreciate that especially because entrepreneurs being the free spirits that they are, Tell me about your free spirit at the moment when the uh, 516 ads, 631 ads, 718 ads came about. What was the thought process behind that? And then how, how does that system work? First, we thought of the name, and the name was like, that's a good name. Right. Uh, I always wanted to get into advertising and marketing, but nobody would ever hire me. Uh, but then there came that moment, and I might as well go for it now, you know, uh, creating the uh, Everything Bagel, creating Learn, Let's End All Racism Now. Uh, so then 516, and, and, and I always wanted to get into marketing and advertising, uh, but no one would have hired me. And I was a dad at a very young age, so I couldn't take the salary anyway. The salary is like twelve five, thirteen five. But then I thought of five one six ads, and then I actually quickly bought all the other area codes. And I was like, "That's good." On one end, we'll help businesses get their name out there in the many different ways that we can. Mm -hmm. Having created the Everything Bagel, having created Learn, Let's End All Racism Now, I can't draw a line and I can't sing a note, but I have some kind of creativity for branding and what goes with that. Right. So we'll help businesses and strategize with them and brand with them. But we're going to use our platforms to spread positive instead of negative. And that came from creating Learn, and the media ignored me. So I was like, we're going to create our own media. So... 516 ads, 631 ads. Uh, once again, help businesses get their name out there and use our platforms to speak uh, and spread good stuff in the community instead of bad. Excellent. And so is it mostly service businesses that you work with or products as well? Because I did notice that there's um, a nice amount of services businesses that yeah. are on your website. Uh, mo mostly services business in the Long Island area, but also, uh, also product as well. Uh, and, and that comes to the branding part. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a guy who was based out in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. He had four brick and mortar weight loss places. And actually during a time early in Corona, he couldn't even cross state lines to get to his place. He's literally spending like $40,000 a month in rents uh, uh, for places that he can't even get to. He was actually losing a fortune. Wow. So he needed to uh, rebrand himself. And we were on a Zoom call together uh, uh, with other people and it came up eating. And then someone talking about, and I slept better and for some reason uh, that made me think and remember he's this guy he's counting on me to help him with his business he's in weight loss he's looking to rebrand himself so so that made me think like eat well sleep well and I was like eat well sleep well I, I like that eat well sleep well that's cute and actually the dot com wasn't available it was parked so I said listen don't don't, don't you don't need to spend the money on the dot com I go I go get dot net Right. And, and like dot info, you know, if we want to come across info, we could still brand ourselves with it. But the guy actually made a deal with the domain name owner and he actually bought eat well, sleep well dot com. Okay. So that's a product in this yeah. case, you, you know, so it could be a mixture. So yeah. mostly service in Long Island. But uh, when it comes to branding and strategizing, theoretically, we right. can work with people uh, anywhere. I like that the focus on services because i mean us as a as basically a, a service business you know we're not selling physical goods we're not shipping them and uh i feel like if you're advertising online a product it's a bit easier because you have the whole instant gratification shopper scenario on the other end of like for example if i'm scrolling on my phone and i see an ad for some physical thing that i know if i click buy it'll be at my door you know in a couple of days it's real easy for me to conceptualize that as a consumer i click this and it, it gets shipped to me and then i have it um, but when you're advertising or sharing information about a more service-based business um, it's, they don't have that instant gratification of, yeah, they're going to ship it to me. And so to get across what you do as a service online, I feel like it takes a little bit more skill and thought for how to present that versus here's a picture of the thing that you're going to buy. Click this button and it'll show up at your door. An impulse buy. Type yeah. Thing. So we don't have the benefit of the impulse buy in the same 
way. It's still it's still possible, but it's harder to draw that line in people's head about what they're impulse buying because it's not being like mailed to them and they can't hold it in their hands. They might have to go somewhere and experience something or do something or have someone do something for them. So I appreciate the service business uh, focus. Um, and it needs to be mixed in with other stuff. A, a term that I like to use for business owners and the mixture of their marketing is a mixture of web and warmth. Okay. On the web, all the different things that you should do. Uh, everything should be pristine. Uh, uh, don't have one period of comma off. All of us, has been, I want, when I'm saying all of us in this case, uh, respect to always the exception to the rule. There's always exceptions to the rule. I get it, and right. I happen to, but for the sake of having a conversation, uh, 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 don't have a period or a comma off. We need 10,000 things to go right to get a deal. We need one thing to go wrong not to get a deal. Right. Periods off, a comma's off. Oh, look, they can't even, they don't even have good grammar. What are they going to do wrong with me? Right. So everything should be pristine, but a mixture of web and warmth. Actually, online, when you talk about service industry, so let's say legal, insurance, financial people, and all that goes with that, online would probably be throughout the early, throughout the first 25 years of the internet. Probably very disappointing for people in those industries. Mm -hmm. They want to get use out of it, but they really haven't been able to because certain things are a better mix. It, it's cute. It's easy to sell a, a, a cute floral arrangement that you could go pick right. up for $35, then uh, we have the best rates, call us. Right. But, but certain aspects of the web, so web and warmth. So we'll stick with the web for a second. It, 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 hire me on Facebook. Insurance doesn't go. But maybe if somebody puts out an informative email once a month, maybe puts out a blog once a month, mm. just creates action and puts out a little activity, more to be informative instead of selling, just so they have a little bit, right? just so they have a smidgen of a presence. Yeah. Because those people still better participate in networking events that others run. If they don't like the way others do it, let them create their own participate in business development events. Once again, whether they like that others run them, I, I often say create your own piggyback on others. If others are doing a good job of doing it, work with them, but also create your own. Take a leadership role in these rooms, certainly for any financial advisor, actually any attorney or any CPA. Mm -hmm. If they're in a business room and they're facilitating business activity amongst business professionals and they're doing it well, that will only come back to help yeah. them uh, uh, in the long run. Sometimes you don't see it right away, yeah. but over time, if you do it well, uh, it will benefit them. I want to break down two things that you said that I like. One is the putting out informative content in the form of an email or a blog. And then I would extend that to things like podcasts and even starting a YouTube channel nowadays, because when you are providing a service, one of the most important things I think you can convey is your expertise, right? And presenting how this is an industry that you know very well and that sort of inherently uh, conveys the um, idea that you can be trusted in this domain, right? If this is an area that you know a lot about and that's easily demonstrated through some type of content that you're putting out as opposed to having to get everybody on the phone and prove to them that you're an expert in, one at a time individually. And so I really like that idea and I'll you know confess that we have a, a YouTube channel for audio workstations where we're attempting to do that sort of thing right now and over the last few months we've been trying to grow it and you know just me I have a background as an audio educator so I've been trying to just put little tastes of informative content out there for people who are in my little world of audio engineering and music production and there's been a few videos that have gotten a few thousand views you know not every single one but we're trying to just put them out consistently and just develop a brand uh, as informative in our industry and that lets people know that we exist um, who are just you know internet browsers as opposed to people who drive by or people that we already know or people that we're paying to advertise to we let the YouTube algorithm recommend certain things to people and if we're making a video on a topic that people happen to be searching then we get the benefit of those search engine results and we pop up when that topic is searched. So like I did a, a video on a very specific feature of an of a audio software and just because people were looking it up to learn how to use it, my video came up and we got more views than some of our other videos. And so I can imagine that within all these industries, you know, there's questions that people have when they're trying to learn about it and they type the stuff into YouTube nowadays because YouTube is like, 
you know, people jokingly refer to it as YouTube University sometimes when they go online and just begin learning about a topic by finding informative Absolutely. videos. Yep. And the power of that, I think, is is really big. And the other thing you said is the networking thing. And I understand that's that's a big part of what you do uh, is is the networking because and you can I want you to talk more about that. But just the idea of related services, you know, people you work in an industry that is like, when people are getting this, maybe they need a little bit of this other thing that you don't do, but you know someone who does it. And then you start to form relationships of recommendations. And I think that's a hugely powerful thing because sometimes people come to me about something that's not my expertise, but you know, there's a, an obvious reason why they're asking me about it because it's related to the thing they're doing with me. A recent guest of yours, uh, you had Debbie Viola on and she was mentioning, uh, she was mentioning uh, how networking has been very beneficial for her. Yeah, and that's and she recommended that I talk to you, and then the, this is how it happens, right? You meet more people because you met more people, and then that process continues like that old, and they tell their friends, and they tell their friends. That. And from the business standpoint, I, I like it to be uh, efficient. Uh, I like pinpoint accuracy because there's a very nice aspect to networking too. And some people, I don't use the word social because when I think of social, I think of dating and, I, and I'm not running dating events. Right. I don't, there are people who do that and props to them. Uh, I know some of them, the great. <laughs> That's but, a whole but, service but industry. Not very yeah. successful events. But, uh, so, but, but, but yet at the same time, it's, it's a lighthearted atmosphere. It's certainly a kind atmosphere. So I don't want to say it's a business atmosphere like it's uh, so serious. It's not right. at all. There's a, hopefully a good vibe in the room, but it's also not... Meant, it's not meant to be social. Uh, with that said, you do uh, make friends uh, when it's done that way. I like to make it mean something. Uh, one of the words I've been using more with networking, because there are people who are tired of networking, like, oh, networking doesn't work for me. Uh, but I like to make networking, uh, as I've been doing this now for 15 years in the aspect of running networking on Long Island, I like it to be an, uh, 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 a synonym for business development. Sure. So I want networking not just to be a word, because networking is a word. You ask a million people, you get a million opinions. If, the, if two people are sitting across having from a discussion, if they say they're networking, who's to tell them that they're wrong? Right. This is so it could be from two people talking on up when there's a lot of in between. But from a business standpoint, in the scope of discussing business, not collecting socks, not collecting money for charity, right. not all the nice things people do, but in making it work for business, I do like it to equal business development. Yeah. You know, that it brings you value to your business. Yeah. Uh, if somebody's only looking for value in a, in a sales way of making sales, I get it. Uh, they might be disappointing at times. If that's the case, networking could be very different uh, for different industries. Mm -hmm. uh, an example would be uh, networking would be wonderful uh, for almost anyone in the promotional items industry, anyone who sells business cards and pens and, and, and paper and logos and, and magnets and stuff like that. And that's because any business room that they're in, they could conceivably have a conversation with the general audience who's in that room. Right. You know, no matter there's 20 businesses there, they could have a legit conversation because someone might need pens or business cards tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If an immigration attorney is in the same room, there might not be that many people who have an immigration issue. So it's not just about the person's personality. It's it's very much their industry. Uh, uh, a very cute point where the networking took place where a woman was on a Zoom call and everyone in the first 15, 20 minutes had the greatest ideas for her. She was in jewelry and all that goes with that. And you need to do this and you need to do that. And everyone was like, oh, wow, this is so great. I'm so glad I got on this call. And the woman was like, you know, this is, a, this is great. This has been so informative. But then somebody asked her, what are your price points? Because all the answers she was getting was for like custom jewelry and $35 pieces of jewelry. And she designs jewelry and the perfect gift. Right. But her price points were really wedding rings and engagement rings and more pieces that cost in the thousands of dollars, right. not $35. And it was so funny because all the great information that was for custom jewelry at $30, $50 price points or whatever they were, like something that you could spend. They didn't make as much sense when it was expensive jewelry. Right. <laughs> so in this case, she got the same woman, the same industry, but the intricacy of what she was doing would change the way someone approaches it. Okay, I understand. Um, and so let's say I just started a business and I'm interested in uh, 516 ads or 631 ads. I go to 516ads.com. 
What is the process there like for, for getting involved, signing up with the website? So what are the well, features? Well, you can go online and look at it, but the best thing is to contact me. Uh, my email is david at 516ads.com. And of course, my number, 516-547-4018. They could contact me. And uh, they could start working with us. And uh, uh, it's, it's, I actually raised our prices for the first time in 14 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be a member is now three ninety nine for the year. Uh, then we get people who uh, sponsor events of ours. We get people who do boost and enhance campaigns. And while three ninety nine is isn't a lot, we can break it down into payment plans for those who need it. Uh, for many years, our price was two ninety nine. Did not raise it for 14 years. I never want, if someone doesn't have a nickel, a nickel's a lot of money. But within the scope of business, two ninety nine, three ninety nine is not a lot of money. Right. I never wanted uh, money to ever be an issue a while someone can't uh, deal with us. Well, that's generous of you. So you have the three ninety nine. That's a yearly membership, essentially. Membership with five one six ads. Okay, and we understand membership businesses around here. We have a, a whole wholesale membership for uh, freelance audio engineers and music producers. So once new business signs up, essentially um, they are then invited to networking events. Most networking groups don't tell you about other groups. Right. They're, I, I say nicely, you know, I don't know why. I do know why. They're afraid if you tell someone about another group, they might join their group instead right. of yours. It's right. like sending the Yankees don't tell you about the Mets. Burger King doesn't tell you about McDonald's. Uh, but if I, within me, and I uh, want to build something for the whole community, then with, then with the respect to that, I'm working for the greater good. And that means to give quality information out on all people who are doing good stuff. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we do differently is not only do we promote our own events, but if there are other organizations doing good work, uh, we let them know about it too. Uh, everybody's different. We're very versatile. There are many people who don't even come to events and support what we do. Right. They've seen us. They work with us. They like us. It's not too much money. They support us. Uh, but now, before Corona, we ran 100-plus in-person events a year. And now we're back uh, two years later. We're running about 50 or 60 in-person events. We also run online events as well. Uh, the word that I use for that in speaking to people within regard to their marketing is hybrid. Guys, use the word hybrid. Take the best of everything in the past Mix it with all the new stuff coming out. There's online marketing and Zoom and podcast and everything. Put mm-hmm. it all put it all together and, and make the best. Every company's different. It's not just about your personality. It's about your industry. Uh, so we run over 100 events a year. Uh, we send out a weekly email on Sunday morning that reaches over 10,000 business owners uh, with information, not just on our events, but on, on people who market with us. We mm-hmm. have a little area called Quick Kits, and if someone's looking for an electrician, click here. If someone's looking for this, click here. If someone's looking for that, click here. Uh, in the beginning, uh, no one came to me for anything because nobody knew me. Uh, but over the last 14 or 15 years, I've developed a reputation that uh, someone needs something or has some kind of business problem. Uh, I'm a good person to call. So so in addition to the networking, you're also sort of a business consultant. A business uh, consultant. And I want to be a resource for everyone who right. needs it. Help people solve problems. And yes, definitely a business consultant. Yes. Uh, the idea of networking as a form of business development. It's not just meeting people. It's It's developing your business through relationships and through and resources to help solve problems. Yeah. Um, and the more valuable you can be to your customer, the better. And sometimes knowing other recommendations that you can make to them, to other businesses that might help them is, is a powerful thing, right? If you, if you recommend to someone, someone in a different industry, because you've met them at a, a business development slash networking event, and then that person has a good experience it, it further lends credibility to you that you are making good recommendations, not just in your industry, but in other industries. Yeah, sometimes you get a sale and sometimes you get an account. Right. You know, say someone's a home inspector, so someone can need a home inspector. You say, oh, call this guy. You made a sale. My first interview was with a home inspector. There, there you go. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, call him meticulous. Uh, meticulous home inspection. But, but if you introduce the uh, home inspector to a busy real estate office, now you didn't just get him, a, him or her a sale. Right. You might have gotten them a new account that leads to multiple sales. So, yes, it's up to business owners to uh, continuously plant their foundation and I hope to be a, a valuable teammate for them in their process. Now, do you start in your in your mind's eye, do you start to see all the different businesses around the local area uh, as like puzzle pieces that start to 
fit together in your mind? Like this business can work well with this one. And does that, is that how your mind works when it comes no, to networking? No, no, not my mind. When I see a business, I try to make it like for the time I'm with those people or, or working on them or, or, or with them. Uh, I try to make it like, what would I do if I owned their company? Right. That, that, and, and what are some of the best things that we could do for them, uh, branding-wise, strategy-wise, connection-wise, and uh, everything uh, that goes with that. So you're putting yourself in their shoes. I'm put, Yes, I absolutely put myself in their shoes, no matter what industry that they're in. Uh, and then uh, I, I ask them what's most important to them. Right. Uh, sometimes it might not be. Or they might think something's more important to them, but after you're speaking to them, it's not really what's important. They might have been confused. Right. But for some people, it's branding and just making more sales. For other things, it might be strategies and, and, and just processes of uh, how we put this out there. This is the reaction we could take. I will say this to your listeners, something they could all simply do. I see a lot of people emailing. I see them blogging. I see they have a website. I see they use social media and props, uh, props to anything that you're trying to do. But I see many of the things people are doing, uh, for lack of a better term, coming to a place that does people's music. I see everything freestyle dancing. Right. They have their email. They have their social media. They put stuff out there. But they don't have them intertwined. And I think uh, one of the things that everyone could do to greatly improve their message is have your email. You know, click here. You know, it goes back to their blog. You put up a social media post, click here, goes back to the website. So as opposed to all of them freestyle dancing, have them when you put something out there that when they click it, they're staying within the system of the email, the website, the social media that you're using. And uh, have them more like... Uh, I call it a waltz to sound nice, but it's even more like synchronized swimming. Have those four or five things I think is tied together right. and, and use it more systematically as opposed to one-offs. If someone's going to take the time to put out a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly email, say, mm -hmm. right? So no matter who it is, your company, you're either paying someone to do it or you're doing it yourself. So it's taking a few hours of your time. Right. And let's just say you take the basics. We want to get our company name out there. We want to put out quality information in there. Or we want to put something cute in so they remember us, right? Isn't that what a company would want? Sure. Just say we want to let them know about our next event, so on and so forth. So let's say that somebody does take the time. Uh, to put together an email, a constant contact, MailChimp, whichever one they're using, pick, yep. pick the one that you want. If you just send out an email blast, which is a fine idea, it has a value of a day or two. Mm -hmm. Make it part of your system to take that same exact email blast, copy and paste it, and then put it on your blog. Right. By just sending out an email for a day or two, I'm not saying not to, you're getting your name out there, reaching people, I'm not saying it's bad. But man, let's solidify it a lot more. Let's start, let's start doing synchronized swimming instead of freestyle. Email sent out, freestyle. Email sent out and then take that same email that you spent hours on or paid for it and then put it on your blog. You've just taken an email that has a value of a day or two and given it a value of a lifetime. Right. It's now an index page on your website with words that pertain to your industry with events going on. And when that time passes... What you do is you always put the freshest stuff up top. So it's not like when it's over. Let's say within this email you were talking about an event on January 15th. You don't need to delete it because it's over. Just leave it there. Right. What people will see is over time, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, I send mine out every week. Man, you're building a foundation and putting out quality info over and over again. And people get the sense that you're consistently active. Google wants content. The one thing when everyone talks about Google algorithms, and you never know when they're going to change, and the Google algorithm. Well, one thing they universally like is fresh content. Yeah. And through your blog, so you send out that email, now put it on your blog. And everything that you wrote about and every one that you wrote about, you put them up, and then the new blog up, put it up top. So now you've given it a value of a lifetime. So when people are actually looking stuff up, right? You tend to pop up more with all this quality and make yourself a more uh, reputable site in Google's eyes, who's a big you know judge of all this stuff, because you're putting quality content out. Yeah. There. So that's just an example. Then you could take so then you could take some excerpt from that email that now you put on your blog, and you could take uh, something that's cute, and now you could take that expert. Post something on social media. For more information, click here and send them back to your blog. Right. Now you got your social media and stuff working together uh, uh, and tools working together right. as opposed to one-offs all on their own. And you got me thinking as you're talking about like how to incorporate uh, 
like a studio like is next door. Our studio D does the, the green screen stuff for YouTube. When a, a, a local entrepreneur is speaking directly to the camera about what they do and, and why it is that they love what they do and why they were inspired to, you know, create that company in the first place. I think that little bit of background information that that provides that context of, Hey, this is a real person who lives near where I live and they really care about what they do. And it's evident in when they talk about it, I think that can sort of give someone that extra little bit of context of, of why they might, you know, go to that business over another one because they feel that sense of familiarity already. I know how they speak. I know sort of the things that they care about. And I appreciate that they've been, you know, giving out little bits of free information. And so I, I think it inspires confidence when, you know, people are putting out content online that is related to their business, not just doing sales or, you know, doing normal business, but, you know, giving out little bits of educational and informational stuff that lets people know that they're really up on all the detail. The term I use, guys, is igniting business. Uh, for years, I tell people advertising sucks. The idea of placing an ad and waiting for something to happen uh, has always been a gamble and usually is losing one. Right. But igniting business, use multiple tools, mix web with warmth, make yourself easy to remember, get out there and make things happen. You know, the essence of this podcast is about connecting with local businesses and uh, one of the reasons Debbie Viola, what, you know, as we spoke about, was a previous interview recommended you is because um, I expressed that the whole purpose of us doing this Long Island Local podcast was to get to know the stories of other local businesses that are around us. And especially because the last few years were so weird and difficult. Let's see who's still around and wants to, you know, do business development. And so um, you kind of, I think, represent the essence of that thought because you're so focused on networking and, and business consulting. And so I see why she recommended you. So well, I thank her and I thank you and I thank your uh, teammate over there. Thanks to Debbie. Thanks to David for joining us uh, today. And thanks to Dylan for being a diligent engineer producer behind the scenes. And uh, again, thank you, David, for coming in. And thanks for our listeners for, for checking us out. And we will see you on the next episode of the Long Island Local Podcast, recorded here at Audio Workstations. Today's special guest, David Gusson of Everything Bagel, Learn, and 516 Ads, 631 Ads, Fame. All right. And, and a little <laughs> bit of a view to change the world for the better. <laughs> Please, let's all change the world for the better in any way that we can. And if this podcast can be one little drop in the bucket, I will take it. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Long Island Local Podcast. If you're interested in studio membership programs for music production or content creation, please visit audioworkstationsinc.com. And please check out our guest of today's podcast. We enjoy having on all local entrepreneurs. If you'd like to be considered for a featured interview on our podcast, please contact Long Island Local Podcast at gmail.com.